Hey everyone, Pastor Jimmy coming to you today. I want to give you a few videos about Easter. In this first video, I want to talk to you about why Easter is so important and a couple of questions that we must answer as we make our way up to Easter Sunday. In this first video, we want to answer two questions. What is Easter and why do I need a Savior? The first question we must ask is, what is Easter, so we can understand Easter Sunday? Well, for many people around the world, Easter is a time to celebrate the Easter Bunny. It's a time to have egg hunts. It's a time to, to buy new clothing and, and go to church and all these things. Those are good things, but that's not necessarily what Easter is about. You see, for Christians around the world, Easter is all about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior. I mean, if we really want to get down to it, it's not even about a cross. It's not about an empty tomb. Easter is about Jesus Christ. It is about Him. It is a special day that we focus our attention not just on the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but we focus our attentions on the implications of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, we thank God that because of Jesus Christ on Easter, we can stand before Him spotless and blameless because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Which brings me to the second question. You call Jesus Christ Savior. Well, why do I need a Savior? I hear this a lot. Why do I need a Savior? I live a good moral life. I live a good life. Why do I need a Savior? People around the world today are not realizing the need for a Savior. You know, we all look and we all say, well, I'm a good person. I, I'm a good person. Why do I need a Savior in my life? Why do I need Jesus Christ? And so what I want to try to do in this video is to show you real quickly why you need a Savior. And then over the next few videos, we'll see why Jesus Christ is that Savior. I mean, if we want to get started with the hard question of why do I need a Savior, I can give you the answer in one simple word. It's not a word that we like to hear. It's definitely not a word that we like to have associated with our name. But this little word tells us the only reason we need for why we need a Savior. And that three-letter word is sin. Now, people don't like to hear that word. You see, we must understand sin before we can go any farther. But most of the time, people say, well, stop, stop. I don't have sin. Why, why, why are you telling me that I have sin in my life? Most of the time, people associate sin with immorality or these horrible crimes that we see people commit, and we think that that is sin. But really, sin is just anything that separates us from God. Sin is us missing the mark, so to say, of God's perfection. And so, the Bible tells us, though, if we want to get into the Bible, the Bible tells us that all of us have sinned, and all of us have sin in our lives. And so that means that all of us in our lives are separated from God because the Bible tells us that sin separates us from God. And so the question comes in, well, if how did all of us have sin? Why, why do all of us have sin in our lives? Well, if we go all the way back to the book of Genesis, and we see in Genesis 1 and 2, we see God creating the heavens and the earth. We see Him creating everything there is, and everything was perfect when He created it. And we see Him creating man and woman. We have Adam and Eve. And he put them in the garden, and he gave them one simple rule, one simple law. You can do anything you want. You just can't eat from this one tree. And wouldn't it be nice in our world today if that's all we had was this one simple law, this one simple rule? And it was simple, very, very simple. Genesis chapter 2 says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. That was Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 and 7 through 17. And so you see one rule that they had to obey. One rule. But if they broke that rule, there would be death because sin would come in. And so then we get to Genesis chapter 3. And in Genesis chapter 3, we see Adam and Eve. We see man and woman in the garden. We see everything going fine. And then we see Satan come in to tempt them. And we see because of the temptation that Satan brings in, we see them eating of the tree. We see them breaking the one rule that God gave them. We see them breaking the rule of, of not eating of this tree. And as God warned when that happened, sin came in. And the, the, cause, or the, the consequence of that sin is death. 
And so because of that, sin came into our world. The Bible tells us that as one man brought sin into the world and death into the world, one man, Jesus Christ, can get rid of our sin and forgive the sin of man. And so way back in Genesis 3, we see sin enter into our world and is continuing in our world today. But then that brings up the next question. Well, I'm, I'm glad sin came in, but I'm not Adam and Eve. I haven't done anything. I still live a good life. So how can you tell me that I have sin? How can the Bible say that everyone has sin? Well, sin is a natural thing for all of us. Let me ask you a question. Those of you that have children, have you ever sat your child down and taught them how to lie? Did you sit them down at an early age and say, son, daughter, here's how you lie? No, I, I don't think any parent does that. But yet... Those of you that have children, you know that you walk into your child at a very young age, you ask them a question if they've done something wrong and you know they've done it. And they'll say, no, no mom, no dad, I didn't do that. They lie. You didn't teach them to lie. No one else taught them to lie. That lie is inherent because of the sin that comes to us at birth. The sin that is in all of us when we are born. And as we continue to grow, we continue to sin. And that sin is inside of all of us. And the Bible also goes on to tell us not only are we sinners, but the Bible goes on to tell us that we can't get rid of our sin on our own. The Bible tells us that we can't take care of our sin on our own. The Bible also goes on to tell us even worse than that is that the wages of sin is death. And because of sin in our life, we will have an eternal separation from God, which is death. You see, many call it the silent death because many people in the world don't know that they have sin in their lives. And so, before we can move on, before we can understand what Easter is all about, the first thing we must understand is this. We all need a Savior because we all have sin. We all need someone to forgive us of our sins. In the next video, we'll continue to look at Jesus Christ as Savior. We'll continue to look at Him as why he is the only one that is qualified to be our Savior.